Hello everybody, my name is Tasman May from the channel Two Books from Tasman and today I'm going to be showing you my Philip Pullman collection. I have been collecting Philip Pullman books for not very long at all. I now have, I believe, 31 different editions, including, for example, this one that is a bind up of all of his dark materials, going really well. After J.K. Rowling proved to be the worst type of human being, I decided to stop spending money on Harry Potter things and have now decided to spend my money on an author who I think is generally an all around terrific person. In 2018, Philip Pullman, he asked a question being like, which side of this transgender debate should I be on? Which was an ignorant question and he really should have done a bit of research before tweeting that because it's Twitter. But he has since said that he was genuinely just asking for information. He has said that he's trying to learn more, he's actively learning more about people of different genders and different sexualities. There was a Twitter Q&A for the, I think, 20th anniversary of Northern Lights and a few people asked, what if you're trans in this world where your soul manifests in a creature outside your body and on the whole they are male, human, female, demon or vice versa. There are some instances, as mentioned in book one, where sometimes people do have a demon of the same sex as them, and he said that he doesn't know enough about gender yet to be able to give an answer, but that it is something that he's thinking long and hard about. So, we stand. It's not hard to be a nice person, and many people this year have been making it seem like loving people is difficult. It's not. It's not. We need more people like Philip Pullman in the world. We need more Phils. So, I will quickly show you first of all, I have this pin that my best friend and flatmate Jess got me and it is of Pan and the Alethiometer and I love it so so much. First time that I wore it out of the house it fell off. Thank god a friend noticed it on the floor of the pub and she was like oh what's this shiny thing and it was this. I also got a few stickers from Redbubble of some His Dark Materials inspired designs. There is this one of Lee with Hester, Lyra with Pan and Yurik in his hot air balloon and then this sticker of Lee Scoresby, Hester and Yurik Bernison as well. I'm going to cut them out so they're like nice and pretty and neat and I might just stick them on my shelf here or just on my face. My other non-bookish things are um, these issues of the Radio Times. <laughs> this one is from last year from season one of His Dark Materials with Lynn manuel Miranda, my king and hero. And then there's this one with Andrew Scott and Emir Wilson from season two. Okay, on with the books. A lot of these, the majority of these, I have bought secondhand, so it won't be available now, but you can look on eBay. A lot of the secondhand books, especially in this pile, I got off Depop. Yeah, I'm just gonna show you lots of covers now, I guess. <laughs> Oh, and if you're one of those people that is gonna comment down below being like, mm, you shouldn't be spending all of your money on multiple editions of the same book, fuck off. This is the edition that I've had since I was a child. This is book one of the His Dark Material series, which is the series that Philip Pullman is most famous for. We would now class it as young adult, but it first came out as general children literature. This is the edition that I grew up with. There is also The Subtle Knife, which should be here, but I currently have it lent to my dad because I lent him this earlier this year and he's on book two now. Then we have a very similar edition of Northern Lights. I'll show you both of them next to each other. I got this one on Depop for like two pounds I think. It has an odd little hole punch little hole in it but you know what? Two pounds. I'm happy with it. And it's not been read at all. I really love the colours of this one. I'm very nostalgic looking at this image because of course I grew up with this one so it makes me think of my childhood but I prefer the colours of this and it's got that really lovely matte texture. Then I have this TV tie-in cover of The Southern Life. I love this one because it's got Lynn on it of course, my hero. Next I have this edition. I got these actually for my niece and then I decided to keep them. So yeah, I'm a really great aunt. They came in this box. I really really love these covers. These came out when the first book in the Book of Dust series came out because they wanted to match the style of the covers, which you'll see in a hot sec when we get to that. The final books from that first stack are also ones that I got online, as in secondhand. I love these editions. I only have The Southern Life in this edition, but I'm on the hunt for Northern Lights and The Amber Spyglass as well, but you know, like, cheap. <laughs> oh, and I really, really like this vine. It's really pretty. And then this set, which I believe are actually the most common ones for people of my age to have been brought up with. I've seen a lot of these online, <laughs> and also the hardbacks of these are quite famous too. 
The darling Molly from Mind of Molly gifted me this one because she knew that I was on the lookout and she managed to find it super cheap, which is amazing. We love thrifting books. This has all three of them in. This is the Everyman's Library edition. I don't usually like these editions, but I really, really like the artwork on this. Usually they just have like a picture of the author, but I like this one. I really like that one. It's really nice. Next we have, <gasps> oh dear. The ever so exciting brand new illustrated edition of Northern Lights. This is illustrated by Chris Wormall and it came out this year to mark an anniversary. I think it's the 25th. <laughs> Oh my god, I haven't even looked under the dust jacket! Jesus Christ, that's stunning. I watched an interview with Chris Wormall and Philip Pullman and some people that are involved in the TV show as well. And Chris said that he created all of these by carving the images into wood and then printing it, scanning that into his computer and then he added the color in digitally afterwards. I'd love to get a print of this. How absolutely breathtaking. Next, I have a few unusual ones. This, a friend of mine, Ames from Lady Witching, gifted me this as a thank you for when she came to stay with me. She is French and she knew that I was collecting them and so she gave me this French cover and it's actually the illustration from the box that I mentioned earlier. I haven't found an English edition with this cover so I'm very very grateful to have it even though I of course will never ever read it. And then I have the play of His Dark Materials which was adapted by Nicholas Wright and was on at the National Theatre. The National Theatre records all of their productions and you can actually book to go to their archives and book their cinema room and watch their previous shows so I'm definitely going to do that when Miss Rona allows. Next Next I have the novellas. The first one that came out was Lyra's Oxford, then Once Upon a Time in the North, and most recently Serpentine. I haven't read any of these yet. I'm most excited about reading this one, I think, because Lee Scoresby is one of my favorite fictional characters of all time. And this is the origin story of how Lee and Yurik met. This one takes place two years after the conclusion of The Amber Spyglass. And this one, I believe, is even further behind Lyra's Oxford. Next, I have the sequel series. Well, Philip Pullman calls them an equal series because book one in the Book of Dust, which is La Belle Sauvage, takes place before Northern Lights. And then book two, the secret common wealth takes place after The Amber Spyglass and then the final book which hasn't come out yet is of course going to take place even further afterwards. I managed to get this one for three pounds in Waterstones because there's a little tear at the top and there's a little bit of sun damage but I don't care about that and then this one was kindly gifted from Molly because I was like no 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 I'm not gonna buy it I'm not gonna buy it and she was like you're gonna regret it if you don't buy it and then she bought it for me because she's just a gem. Of course I also have them both in hardback. Again I managed to get this one second hand a very very long time ago in a bookshop in Hale why actually. And then this one I bought, I think again, with a discount. It must be slightly damaged somewhere. I can't figure out where though, because it looks perfect condition to me. But I bought this with like a five pound discount or something like that in Waterstones. And I wanted to show you them under the dust jackets. This is La Belle Sauvage and this is The Secret Commonwealth. Look at them, because they're dust. It's dust. I also have from my childhood the audio books of His Dark Materials. I think I asked for these for Christmas or for a birthday or something. I've actually never listened to them in their entirety. I listened to about a third of the first one when I was maybe 10. Like I fully played it on a CD player and everything which was plugged into my wall. What a bloody throwback. And of course they are the same covers as the ones that I grew up with. And that is all of his dark materials. We've got some other books by him though so bear with. These are books one and I believe either three or four in the Sally Lockhart series, which was adapted into a TV show starring Billy Piper. I read the beginning of this as a kid, but I didn't like the historical setting. I believe they're sort of mysteries set in Victorian London. I will definitely read this at some point. And when I do, I'm sure I'll also buy the other duplicate beautiful editions of these that are in existence. Oh, I've had these since I was a kid as well, which is why they look like this. <laughs> More recently, I got The Good Man Jesus and the Scoundrel Christ for two pounds in a charity shop. This is a non-fiction book about religion and atheism. And then even more recently than that, I got Demon Voices, which is a collection of essays by Philip Pullman about writing and creating. I believe there are about 30 essays spanning 20 years. I'm very, very excited to be able to read these to see his insight and genius and how his thoughts may or may not have evolved over the last few decades. Finally, I have two editions of his 
rendition of the Grimm fairy tales. This one was the hardback from when it first came out, and this is the brand new Penguin Clothbound Classics edition. The contents are exactly the same, but of course I had to have them both. I read some of this one, I haven't read all of them, I'm really bad at finishing fairy tale collections, but when I do, I think I'm actually gonna read this one because it's stunning. And that is all of them. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you like this. If you're a Philip Pullman fan as well, do comment down below, let me know, let's chat for the rest of our lives about our Lord and Saviour. I wonder how he'd feel about me calling him my Lord and Saviour when he's such a diehard atheist. When I reread book one again, it's gonna be this edition that I read because, oh my god. I also think I'm gonna put the CD audiobooks onto my phone. Oh, they're full cast as well. The audiobooks are full cast. I will also leave the links for all of the little knickknacks down below. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.